We are all hugely concerned by the current coronavirus situation in India. Many of us have loved ones out there who we are all concerned about. So joining us on the program this week is Dr. Anindya Kaur, who is a frontline coronavirus doctor, and he joins us from Kolkata. Dr. Kaur, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Alarming reports that are coming out from India with regards to this new tsunami of cases, as it's being referred to, as opposed to a new wave. Just tell us exactly what you're seeing out there. Well, of course, uh, I think uh, India is really, really having a huge surge right now. And it's, it's just like a storm. This, it was not the case in the first wave. But I think India was really not prepared for it. People were speculating that this kind of terrible and devastating situation will happen in first wave. But somehow, God forbid, it didn't happen. But this is happening in the first, uh, in the second wave, where our healthcare system is collapsing. There is an oxygen shortage. There is, there is a problem with the vaccination. Uh, there is a problem with the black market of the drugs, the, the trial drugs, which, which is another long-term problem. And uh, then there is a problem with people losing their jobs and all the other problems that happened in the first wave. So everything got hodgepodge in the second wave, along with the crisis that is coming up. Just a month ago, the entire world was praising India's successful vaccination program. So how have we got to this situation whereby we are now having a shortage of oxygen, something which we're completely and constantly surrounded by? After the first peak in September, cases dipped for almost 30 straight weeks before they started rising again in mid-February. Okay, so many experts believe that the, this, this kind of surge happened because people kind of let their guard down, right? And of course, uh, adding to that, that India failed to seize the opportunity to augment its healthcare infrastructure and vaccinate aggressively, okay? Now, so far we have vaccinated only 8.3% of our population, fully uh, single dose, and fully vaccinated population is only 1.4%. And you can't expect uh, to vaccinate almost this 1.2 billion population overnight. It's not possible and it's not going to happen. And there are also these micro details which I'm noticing that when people are going to this vaccination center, the picture is really, really terrible. There is no social distancing and people are coming from nowhere and people don't know where to go, whom to go, whom to ask questions. People are not even wearing a mask. And, and of course, people people are thinking that one, one, when they get this vaccine, everything will be over, but they don't know that they might, this, this largest vaccine drive can be a largest infection drive as well while taking the vaccine. Because when I'm coming back from hospitals, major clinics, which are running vaccination program, they're not having any kind of uh, social distancing or any program or plan, like how to vaccinate the people. And I know one of my very good friends who is my colleague as well, whose father died after taking the vaccine in seven days. So he definitely got the, vac uh, the infection when he went for the vaccination. That is another terrible thing that is going to happen. So why exactly is that the case? Is it that we have some of the right measures in place, but there is still a lot more education that still needs to be done? You need to understand that the health literacy of India is really, really poor. Okay, and, and I, was, I was just talking with one of my friends, one of my doctor friends, and, and was telling uh, her a few days back that pandemic taught Indian doctors how to wash their hands. Even before the pandemic, we were not even wearing masks in, our, in ICUs, in hospitals, because they have the potential role as a teacher. So their behavior towards infection was like that. So if this is the scenario, you can imagine that what is the public scenario? So this health literacy, is, it's a long-term program, okay? You can't expect everyone to wash their hands, everyone to maintain this hand hygiene and everything in eight months of pandemic, because this is something that is new they're hearing. And every, every time like, a lot of people in, on the road, the poor people, the beggars and everyone, they don't know what, they, what is happening, okay? So that is one of the major challenges. Like, for example, I was reading somewhere that for this health literacy, it's not only Indian problem, even US and in UK, this is also a major problem. And in India, uh, almost nine people out of 10 people have low health literacy. 
okay and there are also a lot of other complex issues like a lot of people believe in traditional medicines like ayurveda and all these things many people don't believe on in western medicines so they have started like having tulsi and all those traditional medicines well i don't have any problem with that but of course they are safeguarding themselves with this kind of their cultural belief okay so you need to also accept that but also need to aware them in a very culture cultural sensitive manner i think that is how you increase the health literacy because it's a very cosmopolitan country and there are so many i think backgrounds languages minorities and you can't ex- you can't expect everyone to understand in a same way you mentioned home remedies there we've all seen that we have a global vaccination program in place but many people still seem skeptical to follow this path and would instead rather take one that's involving home remedies from your perspective when you hear people taking this non-medical route does that concern you it's a concern when they're doing it too much because they need to understand that when to stop and when to go to the doctor they don't make them aware that there is there is a point there is a limit you can't go after that you have to take this allopathy or western medicine after that so that is one of the major problems i think <clears throat> you're aware of this fact that we especially the junior doctors are the first uh, barrier when you come to the healthcare system or the first gateway to the healthcare system rather so many people as because they don't have the proper health literacy they don't know when to come or when to visit their doctor so they they definitely come when it is too late and they show their anger whether by bitching or showing their aggressiveness to the junior doctors and also it's it's their fault but it's not their fault because they really don't know when to come whereas in in nhs there is a queue there is a waiting system and people patiently wait it's not the case in india we know that there is a huge economic divide that exists in india so is what we're seeing really a case of the rich being helped and those less privileged being left to fend for themselves of course i think when the healthcare structure is collapsing you can't expect for for us for doctors you can't expect this kind of thing we get to see every day that we have to give the vip's treatment first and it is still happening on the other hand there is this new concept that is rising up that expensive doctors expensive hospitals expensive private medicines are the best medicine so you know the, there is a there is a psychology of panic buying like there are a lot of people those who are buying this uh, this trial drugs okay so it it is kind of a coping behavior which which views this kind of buying as a venue to relieve anxiety and again control over the crisis okay so a lot of people are stocking this important drugs maybe these drugs are like 4000 indian rupees but from the black market they're getting it uh with the with the price of 20000 or 30000 and of course many of the international guidelines government guidelines they are saying these drugs are of no use but people are trying their last resort to save their relatives or the neighbors out of the panic buy and there is a statistics that most of these poor people lose their land house saving of their entire life due to the health issues it has been always like that and in in during the covid it is coming like this the system is getting exposed we know that the kumbh mela festival was brought forward from next year to this year we've also seen political rallies take place recently i guess in the midst of a global pandemic the question really is how has this been allowed to happen uh see vishal i think <laughs> I think when I was in a medical school I am sad that I was not taught about politics I only knew how to save lives but of course uh politics and medicine is intertwined and you can't really stop being a political when something disastrous like this is happening and of course this was a major concern and it's not that they were not aware they were very much aware but still that happened and i don't know how it happened but it happened but and it was not right and of course we have this very strong religious values and many people believe that if they are going to kumbh mela or something like that covid won't touch them right so the, this kind of religious belief is there in our spine 
and i can't change that this is our cultural belief but it is also our uh leaders duty to make people understand that this is not the right time to go through this and that didn't happen and so health is something that we've talked about a lot on this show and something that we've all talked about recently more than ever how would you describe the mental health of those who are currently experiencing this dire situation in india this is particularly concerning because you know for mental health there are a lot of social triggers that causes the mental health problems right and covid is one of the social triggers many people those who were undiagnosed cases of anxiety disorder many people those who were cases of undiagnosed obsessive compulsive disorder they came up they showed up okay we talk about mental health but i think now it's time we talk mental health and make people aware of the symptoms not only mental health like just go and talk to your family just go and talk to your friends do meditation do all these things is the high time we make people aware of this mental health disorder this funerals shrads and all these programs they actually help you to cope up with the grief after you lose your loved ones right and if someone dies of covid you can't see your see them it's just for 5 minutes and you they take their bodies okay so of course post covid these people will also have the psychotic grief or problems with that and this is also one of the major concerns like for example this colleague of mine who lost his father yesterday he got to see his father only for 5 minutes before he was handed over to the municipality and it's also one of the human rights to do the last rites right that right is also taken up and i think this kind of crisis is not the first time it's happening it's the first time the world is seeing but this kind of crisis has happened before during the aids epidemic okay this is not the first time we are seeing it just getting exposed at how it happened uh to the entire community this is extremely heartbreaking and very sad to hear it's clear that change is desperately needed but i guess what are some of those changes that we need to make and how do we go about making them i think earlier we were talking about health literacy it is kind of a democracy okay it's like pushing the democracy towards the patients towards the normal population i think instead of under reporting the deaths instead of under reporting the cases we become more truthful we become more transparent and we push more democracy towards the health literacy amongst the general population and we need to tell the truth that what is happening and even if it is out of our hand we need to also tell that in the first wave when our family had a lot of covid uh, infections people started ignoring us this time it's not happening but it's still there right so people have the tendency to move away from the reality but that is not the way Just lastly doctor for all of our viewers who are undoubtedly concerned for the welfare of loved ones back home in india what message would you like to give them i think we shouldn't give up the peak will happen uh, till the second week of may and then it will go down but we so we there is no uh, because india is also one of the biggest vaccine producer in the world so we can vaccinate we have the potential and i'm sure uh, our political leaders have taken some lesson from all this massacre that has happened well doctor huge thanks for coming on to the program and of course a huge thank you from all of us here at the z network for all the work that you're doing with your patients thank you thank you vision